This program is produced by the volunteers of Teleco Village Broadcasting. Welcome to Handmade, a series about artisans and craftsmen who use their creativity and skills to make one-of-a-kind art pieces. In our modern society, when everything is mass-produced, pre-packaged, and available on Amazon, it's easy to forget that some things are still made by hand. In this series, we'll be visiting the studios and workshops of woodworkers, weavers, stained glass makers, metal workers, quilters, and many more. Not only will you see these artisans at work, but you'll hear about their creative process and learn how they acquired the skills needed to make their unique pieces of art. So come on, let's visit the studio and workshop of today's featured artist. Today we're visiting the stained glass studio. It happens to be my specialty. It's good to be friends with the producer. When I tell people I'm a stained glass artist, church windows come to mind. But stained glass has a long history. The Romans were the first people to make glass and build simple stained glass windows. Stained glass reached prominence during the Middle Ages when craftsmen mastered the techniques to fabricate large windows. It was frequently used in churches to communicate religious stories to lay people who could not read. The most well-known stained glass artist of modern times was Louis Tiffany. He is best known for his ornate lampshades and window panels. They are prized by collectors and still sell for thousands of dollars. Nowadays, you see stained glass windows in libraries, office buildings, retail stores, and of course, churches. In houses, it is frequently used in doors, transoms, and windows when privacy is needed, but you still want light to enter the room. Window panels add color to rooms, and tabletop glass pieces are used as home decor. When you make a stained glass window panel, there's two main parts to the process, the design phase and the fabrication phase. The design phase involves selecting the right pattern and then fine tuning it to a pleasing composition. Next is picking the right colors of glass that go together and work well in the final design. The fabrication phase starts when all the individual pieces of glass are cut out and soldered together. This is where hand skills are important to the final fit and finish of the project. I'm going to use a recent client project to show you the entire process. When you first start out in stained glass, you end up following very simple patterns. Uh, here's the very first piece that I made. Six pieces. Still, I still have it. I'm still very proud of it. Stained glass always starts with a line drawing. And here's the finished piece. As your soldering skills and glass cutting skills become better, you become more ambitious and you want to work on bigger pieces. Here's a piece called Three Flamingos. And here's the line drawing that goes with it. Here's an example of the finished product. A couple weeks ago, a client came to me uh, with a piece of metal that they had gotten at a garage sale that they wanted me to make a panel to go inside here. Uh, you can see it's mostly uh, a southwest type pattern with uh, cowboys and um, horses and cattle and things like that. We spent a little bit of time talking about different images that would be appropriate for the panel and uh, things like cactus and um, Longhorn cattle, cowboys, and they settled upon Indian pottery. So the next step in the process was to find some different images of pottery. And uh, I happen to have this book on Southwest design, 
And one of the patterns in there was uh, some Indian pottery. Uh, it is a, it's a round design, but generally it, it is rectangular, so it's going to be a good candidate to, fit in, to, uh, to be in the panel to fit inside the wrought iron. So we started out with a, a, a rough image, and I tried to get it to a size where it uh, was correct to fit inside the panel. Um, the client didn't really like this design on the pot, uh, I, and I'll, I agreed, I thought it was a little confusing, so uh, we came up with some different designs. We went on Google Images and uh, looked at different kinds of Indian pottery, and we came up with this one for the pot instead of this design here. We spent a little bit more time sort of in the mock-up stage where we looked at different colors for the, for the pots. This pot here is a more vertical pot, and here's this horizontal part. There's a little accent here, some chili peppers that are hanging down. The next step in the process to, is to come up with an actual line drawing of the final version that gets fabricated in the glass. People ask me uh, where I buy my glass. There's about five or six glass manufacturers in the United States, and uh, you can see over the years I've accumulated quite an inventory, but when you buy glass from a glass manufacturer or distributor, it, it comes in big sheets like this. Uh, we then cut those down into smaller working pieces that we incorporate into uh, the panel or window or whatever we happen to be working on at the time. When people think of stained glass, they typically think of solid colors. And glass comes in hundreds of different colors. But one of the unique features of it is it also comes in different textures as well. Here's a piece of what they call hammered glass. And it has a, a, a real heavy texture on it. And that's what's nice is it can be used to add a little bit of depth to, to the picture. Here's a piece of uh, pale water glass, and you can see that the texture that they've added to it uh, can be used for water, and also a lot of times you can use this for sky as well. Everybody thinks that stained glass is always colored, but there's quite a, a variety of clear glass. And this particular glass, you can see, has a leaf pattern embossed on it. Here's another variation of clear glass, and it's called chips and streamers. I also call it confetti glass. It, uh, it has these little pieces that are embedded in it during the manufacturing process. It's one of my favorite pieces, and it comes in all kinds of different uh, colors. Here's a piece of really high-end glass made uh, by a company called Euboris. Not only do they have really unique colors, but they also have this modeled effect to it. And it makes really beautiful uh, leaves and background colors and adds a lot of um, texture and value uh, to a piece. Here's another piece. Uh, it's called Wispy Glass, and you can obviously see why. This is a great piece for sunsets. When you're designing a stained glass piece, the selection of color is really the difference between a good piece and a great piece. Uh, here are some of the colors that we're going to use for our southwest pattern. Here's some uh, wispy glass that we're going to use for the sky. Southwest patterns have lots of oranges and reds in them, so we're going to inc include those colors as well. I think these, uh, the chili peppers are going to be this color red, maybe with some oranges mixed in as well. After all the pieces are cut out, uh, the next step is to glue the various pieces on the corresponding uh, color of glass. Uh, all the uh, pattern pieces have been glued on to the uh, corresponding colors. And now the fun part, we get to cut them apart with, uh, with a glass cutter. This is what a glass cutter looks like. They all have a little uh, carbon uh, tungsten wheel here at the end, and that's what scores the glass and enables it to break. So we apply a little bit of uh, lubricant, and you'll when we will start here at the edge, 
and you'll hear a screech. Now I need to cut these individual pieces out uh, so I can work on them a little bit easier. Once the pieces are, are ready to get cut a little bit closer, the idea is to put the wheel right next to the piece of paper and go along the edge. And you take these uh, breaking pliers and you put them right on the score line and it breaks off. There's still a little bit of glass around the edge and what we want to do is get the glass right up to the edge of the paper. So we come over here and uh, on this spindle is a uh, diamond covered bit and that'll make short work of this glass. The key to it though is that we have to keep it wet because the friction created by the glass makes it very hot and plus we have to wash away the glass as we grind. And the next step is to wrap them in copper foil uh, so we can solder the pieces together. Uh, copper foil comes uh, on a roll, comes in, in uh, different widths. Copper on one side and it has a, a sticky adhesive on the back. They have come up with this uh, foiler which is an automatic dispenser that uh, you just it automatically centers the foil on the glass. So you put on this little wheel and it peels off the backing. Take your little flattening tool, back it goes on the panel. All the soldering is done. Um, you can see that we added the uh, top and bottom borders to the original panel. And we've also added a zinc channel around the edge. Now the next step is we're gonna apply a patina to the, to the solder. It's going into a black frame, so we're going to add a chemical to the solder that turns it black. And all we do is brush it on here, and it's in a chemical reaction between the uh, solvent and the solder. Well, here's the finished piece. I particularly like the coloration on the chilies in the upper left-hand corner. It's ready for delivery to the client. On to the next project. Now that you have learned how stained glass panels are made, I hope you have a greater appreciation of the time and skill needed to make something by hand. It requires passion, practice, and time. If you want to see more of my work, visit my website, stainedglassbygreg.com. To watch other stained glass makers at work, do a search on YouTube and Google. Better yet, visit a local studio or take a class. You may discover a new passion, just like I did. I hope you enjoyed our profile of our local artisan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Handmade.